What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm super excited to bring you guys something that's been requested quite a few times in the comments and that is how to add a launch screen animation to your app. So basically what you just saw there, let's see that one more time. You can add a super slick animation uh, to your app launching. In this case, we have the Instagram logo kind of zooming in and fitting out, kind of like Twitter to a degree. Teach you guys how to set it up where you can have your own custom animations. You can apply this to uh, different kinds of views. And of course, it is uh, fully dark mode supportive. So if we go back and open that up one more time, whoops, let me close this and reopen the app. We'll see that it looks just as nice in dark mode. Uh, and yeah, so we're gonna take a look at how to build this from scratch, no frameworks, all on our own. That said, make sure you absolutely destroy that like button down below as always. Let's absolutely destroy it. So Google has to go back and fix it. Hit subscribe while you're at it if you've been watching and enjoy these videos. Get Xcode ready, get excited. Let's look at some awesome animations. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we're gonna get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're gonna stick with a single view application and I'm gonna go ahead and call this launch screen animation. Hit enter and save it wherever you'd like and let's jump right in. So the very first thing we're gonna do is pick a simulator up here and hit that run button to get that booted up. I have this one open and let me also expand this Xcode window to give ourselves a little more room to work. And actually before I expand this size, we want something to animate on our launch screen. So I just grabbed a Instagram logo from Google Images. Uh, this method works for uh, labels or anything uh, that you wanna animate, but we wanna bring this image in for the purposes of this demo. So go ahead and open up your XE assets, create a new image set, and I'm gonna go ahead and call it logo and drag this guy in. Now we can expand this side of the window and go to our view controller and talk about how this whole thing works. So animation uh, as a launch screen is pretty simple actually. So there's two parts to it. The first part is a bit of a visual trick and the second part is a view controller transition. So the way it works is we have this launch screen storyboard which is where uh, we can obviously put our things that we wanna show on the splash screen once the app is launching However, you cannot perform any animations on here. So how do we achieve the effect? Well, the way we achieve the effect is we know we have a view controller that opens up as soon as that launch screen goes away. And the visual illusion is we make this view controller look identical to our launch screen storyboard and we can perform animations on here. And once the animation has finished, we can transition to another controller, which is our actual app controller. So all of that in practice, uh, or in theory, sounds straightforward, which it is, but I think it helps us see it actually done. So let's do that. So we're gonna come into our lawn screen storyboard here and find an image view, drop it on in. Let's change the image to that logo we brought in. And we need to add some constraints. The first ones I'm gonna add are to horizontally and vertically center it in the container. And then we're gonna also add width and heights. So I'm gonna say 150 by 150. If you go ahead and hit Command R, you'll briefly see that the image shows and then it transitions to our view controller here. So now we, what we wanna do is we want the view controller to mimic our launch screen as a starting position. And in here, that means we need to create an image view like that. And we want to create one. So the frame, we can say the X and Y are zero. 
And we know the width and height are 150 by 150, so you can go ahead and hard code those in. We want to, of course, set the image to a UI image with a name, and the name is going to be logo. And then we can, of course, return said image, put the parentheses there so it becomes a constructor like that. And then we want to add this as a sub view to our view controller. And then in view did layout sub views, we want to call super, whoops, we want to call super view did layout sub views. And then we want to center this image view to be centered on this screen. So now when you run it, you'll notice that the launch screen comes and goes, but our view controller looks exactly the same. So you can't visually discern when the launch screen started and when the view controller began. So I'm going to set a background color so you guys can uh, see the difference and why it's a visual illusion. So we started out the launch screen and then we came to the controller. And now in this controller, we can actually perform animations and stuff. The animation we're going to perform uh, in this video is similar to the Twitter animation, if you guys are familiar with what they do, where this logo is going to basically expand and like we're going to zoom into it and then it will fade into our actual app. So for our actual apps content, we want another view controller, right? So we're going to right click and do a new file, pick a Cocoa Touch class and subclass a UI view controller. I'm going to call it home view controller. And in here, we're simply going to set a background color. We're simply going to say view background color is link. And now let's actually go and work on that animation. So let's get rid of the background color here. And what we want is create a function called animate just to keep things separate. Once we have laid out the actual image view, we'll call that animation function. And one thing that I like to do is you want to call this animation function with a bit of a delay so the user can see the starting position. So we'll use dispatch queue, main thread, and you want to perform uh, that function async after now plus half a second. And then in here, call that animation function. Like I said, this just delays uh, the actual execution. And in here, we're going to use a very simple animation We'll say UI view animate with duration. We'll make this one, make it a reasonable duration for the animation. And we're gonna increase the size. That'll be the first thing we do. So I'm gonna say the standard size is going to be self dot view frame size width times 1.5. And we're gonna want to update the image views frame. And it's gonna obviously be a CZ rect with a X, Y, width, and height. And let me put these on new lines so my OCD doesn't go wild. I don't know if it's just me, but my code has to look perfectly aligned. Uh, so for the X and Y, we're gonna do some calculations up here. We wanna get the difference in X, which is going to be size minus self.view.frame.size.width. And we want the X to be negative this over two. And then we also want to do a difference of the y, which will be the height uh, minus size. Hopefully that calculation and quick math is correct. And this will be diff y over two. So basically what we're saying is we're going to make the size of the image view larger, which is going to be the width of the screen uh, multiplied by 1.5. So it becomes off screen a little bit. The difference of the X, the new X, we want negative uh, of this difference over two. And the difference of this Y is we want the difference of uh, diff Y over two, which keeps our image view centered. So hit command R, builds and run, see how that looks. So now basically what we get is uh, you get the lawn screen. And then once we transition to the controller, it looks like a seamless animation. And that's why I was saying half of this is a visual trick. And the other half is uh, some clever view controller manipulation. So the next thing that we want is uh, as we increase uh, the size of our image here, we also want to uh, fade it out. So we're going to say self.imageView.alpha. 
we want that to go to zero. So now as it kind of increases, it does that. I kind of want the size to be bigger. So we're gonna multiply this by two. Maybe that'll look a little nicer. Definitely looks nicer. And obviously once the image goes away, we kind of want the view controller to also fade to the other controller, which is our home controller, which is our actual main app. We don't want like an ugly animation to dismiss. And the other thing that I'm gonna do is we are gonna copy and paste this and I'm gonna move, I'm gonna delete this uh, opacity changing animation to its own block. And I'm gonna make this one slower than the fate, than the, uh, the other one, which increases the size so it looks nicer. And let's bump this size once more. Let's see how that looks. So the point is you have to play around with the numbers a little bit and I think that looks much nicer. Uh, but now what we want to figure out is how do we get rid of this view controller? So getting rid of the view controller is super simple. Uh, it's actually, I'm seeing it backwards. We don't want to get rid of it, but rather we want to present this home controller. So to present a controller, as you guys know, you first need to create that controller and you can simply call present on it with an animation like so but we want the animation to be a fade so we can update the modal, I believe it's called modal transition style. And there are some animations baked into this already. And the one we want is cross dissolve like so, but we want this to happen after the animation ends. So you have one of two options. Uh, this animation for the fade out is longer than the other one. So you can use this one but there is a completion parameter in here. And uh, I believe this simply takes a Boolean. So I'm gonna say done. So if done, we can perform that presentation of the other controller. You need to mark this self dot because we're in a closure. Let's go ahead and hit command R and let's see what this looks like. So it's a little too fast in transitioning to the other controller and we also get the controller popping up like this. So we want this new controller to be full screen. So we want to say view controller and we want modal presentation style and we want to make this full screen. So it's not, it's not that swipeable card. And we kind of want this to also be delayed. So again, similar to how we delayed the animation function call up there, I'm gonna add a delay block in here, which will be async after now plus half a second. And then we're gonna paste in that presentation and let me go ahead and, yeah, it's, uh, it's okay. So what we're gonna do instead of half a second, because it looks a little strange, we'll decrease that. And generally you want your home controller to not be such a jarring color. So we picked blue here. So it doesn't look great. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do in this home controller is let's get rid of that. And let me just add a label to say like welcome or something, just so we can see that we have switched to another controller. But by this point, you guys should probably get the gist of what we're doing. Uh, point being like, you're gonna have to play around with it to get the exact uh, look and feel that you are going for which is kind of half the fun of it, in my opinion, personally. Uh, we're gonna center this guy. But I, I mean, if I don't say so myself, I do think adding a launch screen animation does really add to the visual appeal of your app. It just really makes your app stand out. And uh, I personally am a huge fan of it. So uh, you should definitely try to add it to your apps. Uh, I wouldn't overdo it with some crazy animation because it's kind of jarring to a degree. Also, I don't think Apple does it with any of their apps, so it's not really first party, but it does, like I said, make you stand out to a degree. So we're just gonna go ahead and center this, and let me give this guy a frame. We'll just say 300 by 100, and let's see what that looks like. So we should switch to the other screen. Oh, that's not what we wanted. Uh, the background color here we should set. So we want this to be dark mode supportive. So we're gonna say this is system background. So we're in light mode, so it should be white. So we're gonna fade and transition and we get to our other screen. So yeah, that's basically how we do it, but let's take a look at what this looks like in dark mode. I'm gonna close the app, 
go to settings, developer, let's flip on the switch for dark mode. Let's go back and let's launch this one more time. So we get that, we transition, and I don't know about you guys, but that's a much nicer launch screen than just a static one. So there you have it. That's how you can add animations to your launch screen experience. It doesn't have to be that fade style animation. It can be whatever you guys decide to build in this animation function. Uh, if you enjoyed the video and haven't done so already, make sure you absolutely smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. There are some comments down there. If you have any questions, suggestions, feedback, just wanna say hi, I love hearing from you guys. Uh, hit subscribe also if you haven't done so already. I think the majority of you guys that consistently watch haven't subscribed, so hitting subscribe definitely means a lot. Would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one.